might be just fun. And the video I'm going to be bringing you guys out today is going to be the first top 10 list I've done in quite some time. It's going to be an updated top 10 list of my top 10 characters I want to see in Super Smash Bros. 4. If you guys remember, um, sometime last year, I believe, I did make a list just like, similar to this, just, you know, just like this, kind of similar to this, um, my top 10 characters I wanted to see in Super Smash Bros. 4, except that day was only, like, a list, it was only, like, a slideshow of pictures with a music playing in the background, and I didn't really give any reasoning behind it or my explanations for why I wanted to see them or why I think they would actually have been, you know, good characters for Super Smash Bros. 4, um, and someone in the comment section said I should have done that. And I did say I was going to do it in just, you know, life and stuff in general. Um, I never got around to it. That's what this video is going to be about. It's going to be an updated version of my top ten characters I want to see with Super Smash Bros. 4. But this time I'm going to give reasons for why I want to see them and why I think they'd be good inclusions in, in Smash Bros. But unlike last time where I just said characters in general, and I did have some third-party characters in there, one of which was already announced for the game Mega Man, I do have to update and take him out of the list because this is characters... I want to see, and he's already confirmed. Um, and I updated this list so it's my top 10 Nintendo characters I want to see in Super Smash Bros. 4. I'll do something later on for characters I want to see. My, my most wanted to see third party characters, but this one right here, this top 10 list right here, is going to be only exclusive to Nintendo characters. And I hope you guys like it. Number 10 on uh, my, my top 10 Nintendo characters I want to see in Super Smash Bros. 4 um, is Matthew uh, from Dar um, Golden Sun Dark Dawn, uh, the son of Isaac, the original hero from you know that series in the first two games on the Game Boy Advance. His son, Matthew, ended up becoming the main character in Golden Sun Dark Dawn. Now, the Golden Sun series is a pretty good you know RPG series from Nintendo. It's had its run for about like what 12 years now. The first game was like 2000, 2001. Um, it is a good, pretty good handheld RPG series from them. And the, the games generally get some wide appeal and they generally get good reviews and have good stories and characters in them. Uh, my reasoning for why I want to see Matthew instead of you know the general consensus for, oh, if we get a Golden Sun rep, it's going to be, you know, you know, Isaac, is because I think they would want to rep the most current Golden Sun game and the hero from it, and that, you know, the, the character that could, that Camelot would probably want to have that would represent, you know, the next Golden Sun, when the fourth one comes out, Matthew's more likely to be the main character. I'm I'm the reason why I specifically want to see, you know, a Golden Sun character in general, and the Matthew, is because they can offer so much to the Smash Bros. 4 roster. You know, the Psy energy powers, the Jin. Uh, on top of being a sword user, he wouldn't be a normal sword user. He wouldn't be like a Link. He wouldn't be like, you know, Meta Knight. He'd be his own sword user. He'd have similar capabilities. Like, you know, the sword users are all fairly similar in some way, shape, or form, but they all have their differences. The Psy energy powers are where Matthew would be different. On top of the fact that the Jin that he can summon, probably a final smash attack, would make for an interesting move set. And, um, and Matthew, I think, just fits in because it'd be a, he'd be an interesting character you know, to add. You know, the personality fits in there. And it, like I said, Golden Sun, it'd be adding another rep to the series, another franchise to the series, and a franchise that I think is kind of long overdue because, you know, Isaac missed out on Paul, so maybe. You know, we can have someone like Matthew in this game.
number nine on my on the, my top ten Nintendo characters I want to see in Super Smash Bros. 4. I would say Sheriff, the old classic arcade game character, as a retro choice. Um, he basically is from the 1979 arcade game that was it, meaning he's basically more of an old school character than the likes of Mario and Donkey Kong, and it's a different type of moveset set that he could be brought in. You can go with the gun, a lasso, you know, a horse maybe, you know, a sheriff type moveset. set. On top of the fact that he's one of the more historical characters, you know, for, you know, that they can pick for a retro choice. He's one of the most historical choices they can pick. And he can represent the arcade. We haven't seen a, a character necessarily in Super Smash Bros. that represents the arcade. So that's something that Sheriff can, you know, could do. Uh, the reason why I really want to see him is like I think he'd be a good inclusion. People, he, he could kind of get like that that pit makeover. Like Pit was mainly like a 2D old school looking character for Brawl, and then Sakurai just spruced him up, made him look more modern, made him look you know like a, a full on 3D model that was more detailed and made him look cooler and everything. I can see they could, I can see them doing that to Sheriff. They could make him 3D. They could you know update his look and you know and be bringing back an old character that has a lot of history with, you know, Nintendo. My number eight on this top ten list is going to go to just a new Pokemon trainer in general. On my old list, I did say, specifically say Gold, you know, Ethan, the second generation trainer, bringing in Chikorita, Quilava, and Feraligator. But right now, um, I'm just going to say in this top 10 list, just a new trainer in general. I think Red's time has kind of passed, and I think we could kind of pull him out of there. No, no matter, even if he is technically the more popular and iconic trainer, there are other trainers out there. We do have, you know, Ethan, we have Lyra, we have May, we have Brendan, we have Hilbert, Hilda, we have the X and Y trainers. I'm just saying, I think a new trainer would represent a different generation, add a different Pokemon to the roster, and give us some unique moveset, something different, something new, you know, something different to represent Pokemon. And um, that's what I mean, and basically it represent a different, you know, uh, you know, generation. My top two choices, if we had to specifically go for a specific generation, would be uh, Ethan for uh, the Heart Gold So So for the second generation remix on DS, or Hilda for you know Black and White the fifth generation on DS. But we could also see a multi generational trainer um, that could work. And, and my reasoning for it is like, I want to see something unique and new. I'm a, I, as a Pokemon fan, I want to see something different from the um, from the from their roster rather than the same old, same old brawl, melee type stuff. And I think bringing in a new trainer could be one way to really spruce up the Pokemon roster. Number seven on my top ten list is going to be Krom from the newest Fire Emblem, Fire Emblem Awakening. Now, the reason why we can include him He's the new current lead, he has a sword, he fits in with the Lord style for Fire Emblem. You know, they typically pick a Lord, they typically pick blue-haired sword users. He fits right in there, he's generally a popular character, he easily represents the new, newest, he's one of the co-leads from the newest Fire Emblem, and he has a lot of moveset potential, he's going ranging from swords, he can also use the lances, and he fits right in there, you know, the Ikes, the Roys, and the Mars. And my reasoning for wanting to really see him is like he could be a new type of sword user. He could he could be like Mark, he could be like, you know, you know, Ike, but he could be his own different type of guy. And he has a cool personality, a cool type of style to his character that could easily make him fit in the Smash Brothers. And you could really use that to make him fit in with all the other sword users and all the other characters in general. And it's probably I think he's more like I, I just think he's one of the better inclusions they can really go for because of his recency and his personality, his moveset and potential, and what they could really do with him going into the future because we could always see Krom and another Fire Emblem. Number six on my top ten Nintendo characters I want to see in Super Smash Bros. 4 is going to be Andy from the Advance Wars series. Now, the Advance Wars series has a lot of history with Nintendo, dating back to like the, the Famicom in Japan, it used to be called the Famicom Wars and whatnot. It had a lot of older games that were Japanese exclusive, and then finally made its like you know localization 
over out, you know, outside of Japan, over in America and Europe and whatnot, with the Game Boy Advance, with Advance Wars, and I think believe 2001, and it's a, a very interesting intelligence systems tactical RPG, just like Fire Emblem, except more in a modern se um, um, modern setting, with a lot of interesting characters that really have nice personality to fit into, you know, Smash Bros. I pick Andy because he's namely the main character, and at least since the Advance Wars series started, and uh, three of them, uh, the two on the Game Boy Advance, as well as uh, Dual Strike on the on the DS. He'd be an interesting character. He wouldn't be a normal like you know fighting type character. He wouldn't have a sword or a lance or anything like that. He'd have his wrenches, and I think the wrenches and his healing abilities would make for some good move set potential, a good final smash. And I think his personality—he's like a carefree, you know, young, you know, soldier type guy, and he'd fit in there with other characters, but be different in the same way. He'd be unique, and he. He'd have that moveset potential, have the personality for the game. It also represents another um, Nintendo franchise, Advance Wars, that has yet to really be represented in the series besides the infantry assist trophy and brawl. It could be really it's time to really push this franchise and expand the franchises represented in Smash Bros. Advance Wars it has a, a lot, and also uh, Advance Wars has a long history with Nintendo, and I, I'd like to see it and you because I really do enjoy the character and I think he would make a lot of sense, you know, in Smash Brothers. We are now in the top five of my list and number five is the boxer himself, Little Mac. Um, Little Mac has a lot of history with Nintendo Punch for the Punch Out series that stayed dated all the way back to the arcade, had um, Punch Out on the NES, Super Punch Out on the Super Nintendo, and then we've recently seen a return of the series with Punch Out on the Wii. Um, so it, it can be like their, Nintendo's way of bringing him back, and then on top of that, putting him in Smash Bros. He has the fighting style to go to it. He's a boxer. He already has that you know fighting style to him to fit in with a, a type of game like you know Smash Brothers. Um, he, he, people could say maybe boxing style might not necessarily be, you know, it, like it might limit him because he's only a puncher, but it, he'd be a unique fighter because he would only be a puncher. He would only do uppercuts and jabs and various boxing styles. It makes him different. He'd be limited, but in the, yet at the same time, he'd be original. He'd be different than all the other characters on the roster. And on top of that, he is a legendary, a legendary Nintendo character. And they could bring him back now. Now that he's come back, he wouldn't necessarily he wouldn't be a retro. He'd be his own franchise to represent Punch Out. And they could bring now that his series has come back, it makes more sense even now to bring him back and you know really advertise him so we can see more Punch Out games. And I just like the character. He has a really interesting personality. He he's carefree in a sense, but he's determined what he wants to make. He gets into tough challenges. He's he's he works hard. He has. He's just like this really likable character, and his fighting style, a boxer, is something I really would like to see in Smash Brothers. The number four spot is actually kind of shared by two different characters. It's shared by Makaya from Fire Emblem Ray and Dawn, and from Robin from Fire Emblem Awakening. Now, on my original uh, my original top ten list, I had Makaya exclusively at the number three spot. Um, since then, I've kind of seen her go down a little bit, but I still would really like to see her because she was such an interesting character in Ray and Dawn. She has that personality, and she's a, a really... She's, she's set my life. I mean, she is, she's probably not as popular now as she was back when the game first released, but she still does have quite a bit of fan base. She was a... The first lead, I think, like, lead in a Fire Emblem game that wasn't a sword user and wasn't really, like, a, like it wasn't like a sword user. It was, I think, the first mage lead character that we ever had. And she'd offer a new moveset, the mage abilities, which is the same reason I think Robin would make some sense, too, because he slash she, they probably would have male and female costumes, has that mage ability, too, and is one of the co-leads in the current one, you know, Fire Emblem Awakening, brings in the magic reason the tomes and the magical abilities. The reason why I see either of these two, I want to see either of these two, is because they would offer so much difference to Fire Emblem. Instead of just having another sword user, we'd have someone that offers something totally different rather than just partially different. And both of them are something like characters. Both of them are main characters in their games. And when it comes to Robin as well, Robin, 
They're the avatar, the my unit, the tactician, which actually is a class type that's represented in multiple different games. Back on Fire Emblem 7, uh, Heroes of Light and Shadow, and in general, just the character that, even though they don't show up, it, I think it uh, kind of represents the player, like when you're controlling the soldiers all on the map, it theoretically represents multiple games. And I think both of these characters would be some be very good inclusions for Fire Emblem's roster, especially Robin, because Robin represents so much of the series, a uh, various certain type of various percentage of the series. And I just want and I just want to see a new class. Like that's really what I want to do. I don't want it, I don't want Fire Emblem to be taken over by sword users. Number three spot on my top ten list goes to Issa Joe from the latest Sin and Punishment, Sin and Punishment Star Successor on the Nintendo Wii. Now, he was on my original list too, at number, I think five, I believe, but he got boosted up because I want to see him more now than I did back then. I really want to see Sin and Punishment get a rep. I really think it's one of those unsung, you know, Nintendo franchises like Golden Sun and Advance Wars and the smaller time, that, you know, Nintendo franchises that really deserves more line, more time in the spotlight, more limelight, you know, more, more light shown on it. And um, I picked Yusa because he is the main character of the latest game, the game that was localized and whatnot. On top of the fact that I think the people out there that really pick Saki as a Sin Punishment rep, I think Issa can do more than Saki. Saki can do what Issa can, but not all, you know, Issa can do what Saki can, but Saki can't do everything with, that Issa can. And I think it all deals down to the jetpack and stuff like that. And I, I'm just saying, I just want to see, I just think it makes a lot of sense to have, you know, Issa in there. And I think it, my main reason is that he's, he is an enjoyable character, he has a nice personality, he's, he's, He's the hero that wants to protect, you know, the world and stop the bad guys and whatnot. And he has the moves that potential to back him up, all of which fits him right in there with Link and Mario and Mike and Darth and you know Kirby and all these different Nintendo characters. He fits in there. And for instance, in the Punishment, another franchise, like I said, that I really think needs more of a spotlight as a playable character in the game rather than just assist trophy. And I also think that since Saki has missed out on two Smash Brothers games now, I think Issa makes more sense as, you know, the Sin and Punishment rep for Smash Brothers. The number two spot on my list still goes to the Demon Lord himself, Girahim from The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Now, Hear him, I find him such an enjoyable villain. Those crazy villains that, you know, they just intimidate you. They don't care about the hero. They take them for granted, and then once you piss them off, they go insane. I like those types of villains, those crazy villains. He, Gara him, is one of those types of villains. He was such an enjoyable character in Skyward Sword. I think, and a lot of people like him. He's a very popular character, a very demanded character for Smash Bros. as well. I think... He would, you know, he'd represent the latest game, latest console game, which is the 25th anniversary of Zelda's game. He brings in a new moveset, which I think he could, he could take out a sword and put him away. Think like down B Sheik, but he instead of switching to a new character, he just switches his moveset by pulling out his sword and putting it away. He's a villain rep, and he's generally very, very popular. He would be right there alongside Ganondorf on the Zelda roster. You know, and he'd fit in so well because of be another villain, being popular, his moveset potential, what he could bring, and I want him so bad because I enjoyed him. He was one of the most enjoyable characters in Skyward Sword. He practically made that game alongside Impa, Zelda, Link, and Groose, and I really would love to see him in Smash Brothers. We are now into the number one spot on my top 10 Nintendo characters I want to see in Super Smash Bros. 4. And if you've seen my last roster, it has not changed. He is still number one. Shulk from Xenoblade Chronicles is still my number one spot on my top 10 list. Why? Because Xenoblade Chronicles was a freaking amazing game. Shulk was a very enjoyable character. It represents Monolith Soft. The newest, one of the newest companies acquired this past generation by Nintendo, they're making X for the Wii U. What better way than to really publish really 
put that company into the limelight, put it into the spotlight, than to put one of their characters in Super Smash Bros. 4. And I picked Shulk because it represents Xenoblade Chronicles, it represents the Wii generation. It represents an amazing character with a moveset potential that doesn't follow the arts of the Monado, it has the Monado, a different type of sword, he's a very enjoyable character. He has the personality, like I said, for almost all my characters that really makes him fit in the Smash Brothers. It is from another Nintendo franchise. I said Sin and Punishment. I said Advance Wars. I said Punch Out. I said Golden Sun. I'm going to say here and now, Xenoblade Chronicles, I really think it will really advertise Mild the Sun. And he is, in his own, Shulk's own pros would add to the game. And I just like the character so much. I like the game so much. And that's my top 10 list for the top 10 Nintendo characters I want to see in Super Smash Bros. 4. We went from Matthew to the Sheriff to a new Pokemon trainer to Krom, Andy, Lil Mac. We went to Makaya slash Robin. We went to Issa Joe, near him, and we got to number one with Shulk. I hope you guys like this top 10 list. I'll see you guys later in my next video.